Hi guys, welcome back. This video is on limitations of elasticity. Now, when we're talking about limitations um, of elasticity, we're actually criticizing elasticity in being, you know, a useful tool in business decision making, right? So we're not saying that it is not useful at all. But what we mean here is that, you know, business owners or entrepreneurs, they must be aware or wary of the fact that, you know, these um, limitations of elasticity do exist and not just you know, um, base crucial business decisions blindly on the basis of elasticity, especially, especially guys, if the risk of these limitations is quite high for uh, their specific, uh, you know, uh, particular business. Now, you have seen a lot of questions in past papers. In AS, they usually come and say, you know, they ask us that, you know, to what extent is PED useful? To what extent is XED, YED, or PES useful in business decision making? And these are your 12 mark questions. And a lot of times we are, you know, when we are evaluating such questions, so definitely we do tend to give, um, you know, the value that elasticity could provide in useful business decisions but at the same time evaluation is a core component of your um, of your essays and you know four marks are reserved for 12 marker discuss questions with respect to evaluation when you're evaluating it evaluation you know technically means criticizing the narrative critiquing the narrative and if you're if your narrative is that yes elasticity is useful then if you're critiquing it then you also have to tell um, the situations in which it could not be useful or you could, you know, um, also mention the limitations of elasticity because that limitations provide hindrances to its usefulness. I mean, it li it limits the extent of its usefulness. That's, that's sort of, you know, what you're supposed to write. And, you know, so first of all, let's jump straight into limitations. So when you're, when you're saying about, when you're criticizing elasticity, we know, guys, that elasticity, whether it is PED, XED, YD, or PS, whatever, we're talking about all sorts of elasticity. So elasticity, guys, are these calculations, the coefficient, the coefficient calculations. They're only, first of all, they're estimates, right? So that is the first limitation, that they are estimates. And we need to understand um, that the price elasticity, let's let's say, for example, price elasticity of demand, right? So the price elasticity of demand data, um, for example, may have been collected from, let's say, surveys, um, and you can't really sort of fully trust those surveys, right? Or the data might have been collected from, let's say, competitor data, right? And we know that the competitor data, the responses of that data could differ from person to person and from people to people, um, and they could vary... And also those, I mean, the data itself could be past data as well, which may sort of not reflect the current, uh, you know, consumer habits. So the point is, consequently, what's going to happen is that we could say, we could argue, or economists could argue, that's how you write in the exam, that elasticity data can be unreliable, right? When you're talking about that, you know, elasticity data, guys, could be unreliable. And if it's unreliable, not only that, it could also be inaccurate as well. And plus, it could change over time. So these are three things that you could write in the exam. It could be unreliable, inaccurate, and it could change over time as well. Therefore, now, as part of your, when you're analyzing it, you need to complete the sentence by saying, you know, therefore, for businesses to actually base important uh, decisions um, decisions could be, you know, regarding your pricing, regarding stocks, stocks of raw material, how much, how much they're supposed to, you know, produce or purchase raw material in order to produce a certain output. Decisions about output and employment, all of these decisions that businesses base, you know, based on the elasticity values, right? So, for example, if my if my demand is let's say elastic and I am reducing the price then in that case, I know that my demand would significantly increase, the quantity demand would significantly rise, since my demand overall is sensitive to price change. And I know the coefficient as well, that let's suppose my PD is minus 3, and a fall in a 10% fall in price could lead to, based on these last three figures, it could lead, lead to an increase in quantity demand of 30%. Now, if that's the case, and if I'm expecting, you know, this to happen, then obviously I would sort of uh, start working on my supply side as well, probably st stocking more raw material, producing more output in order to satisfy that surge in, surge in quantity demanded because of a fall in price. Now, based on that decision, you know, 
I could end up buying 30% more raw material or hiring 30% more workers in order to produce more output and satisfy that increase of surge in quantity demanded. And if now that could sort of be dangerous, it could also lead to business failure because the thing is that I am in basing these important business decisions regarding my pricing stocks, output employment on solely elasticity values and that could prove fatal and dangerous for the for the business right um, instead what you know what should happen is or in, as students you could write in the exam because these are discussed questions you need to provide evaluations and part of the evaluations also um, include providing judgment and alternative solutions as well you could write that instead the elasticity data it should be used as a guide right it should be used as a guide alongside other important data sources when you're making important business decisions and not just base the important decisions just slow, solely and blindly trusting on the elasticity estimate right so this is the first uh, as in the limitation or the criticism that you can make in the exam while writing the elasticity um, limitations right now guys moving forward the second criticism that you can make is that the assumption of the citrus paribus is actually sort of misleading and why am i calling it misleading it's because when you when you say when you use the word citrus paribus it actually means that we're only talking about one factor under consideration that could have an impact on either quantity demanded or quantity supplied and hence we're keeping all the other factors that could affect um, quantity demanded or quantity supplied constant, right? So, for example, if you're talking about price elasticity of demand and you're calculating the impact of a change in price of good X on the quantity demanded of good X, we're keeping other factors constant, um, you know, because although other factors could affect demand, but right now we're keeping it constant, assuming that it's not changing. Similarly, while calculating the XCD for, let's say, good X, um, we are, you know, sort of calculating the quantity demand, the impact on quantity demand of good on con, on good Y due to a change in the price of good X. But then again, we are keeping other factors constant. Similarly, while calculating the YD income elasticity of demand for good X, we are, um, you know, um, calculating the impact on the quantity demand of a good X due to a change in incomes. Right? Sorry, due to a change in incomes. But then again. Um, here we are assuming other factors constant and then and then while calculating PES we're calculating the PES in in the sense that what is going to be the impact on quantity supplied for good x due to a change in the price of good x right and there could be other factors that could have an impact on uh, supply because when you're calculating the PES we are saying that you know due to a rise or fall in price what will be the impact on the quantity supplied of good x assuming that you know we have cal you know kept all the other factors constant but the point is but the point is that while making these elasticity calculations we are assuming only one variable to have an impact on either quantity demanded or quantity supplied when guys in reality in reality there are in reality the point is that there are many other factors that could have an impact on demand and supply which the point is which a business must take into account when making these important business decisions right and so what you could write in the exam is under evaluation when evaluating the extent of the usefulness of elasticity be it pdp as xcd yd uh, for important business decisions and you know when you're saying that when your narrative is that yes it provides useful insight for businesses what you could say is that it's so it it would be too simplistic for the businesses you know to just recommend that a business just you know raises its price due to inelastic demand so if a business wants to increase total revenue you know it's too simplistic to just recommend the business to raise the price just because the demand is inelastic because there are other factors that could actually uh, play a significant role in affecting uh, the demand and subsequently affecting total revenue for example for example if the demand is inelastic and you recommend the business to raise the price okay fine total revenue I mean, total revenue in theory must rise. But what if the income goes down? What if the income falls? Your entire demand curve will shift to the left. In that case, I mean, the increase in price didn't really have the desired impact of raising revenue. In fact, total revenue will fall now because your, you know, incomes uh, go down and your product, let's say, 
is a normal good. In that case, the demand is going to go down. Total revenues will go down. Now, guys, this is what a criticism or a counter narrative is because you're saying that it's too simplistic to sort of recommend that businesses raise the price. You do price and elastic demand because the point is that factors such as income, the price of substitutes, uh, changes in taste and fashion and interest rates could offset this impact. In fact, actually causing the demand to actually decrease and demand curve to shift to the left. So if you're recommending that prices go up and total revenue will rise, if you're recommending that prices go up and total revenue will rise, if the PED is let's say less than one, then you're assuming that the taste and fashion is not changing. But what if subsequently, you know, the demand for the product goes down because of a changes in taste and fashion, like or changes in preferences, right? Maybe let's say this product is um, any product that was being consumed, but later on due to, uh, you know, some scientific research and evidence, it proved that, um, you know, it's bad for health. And then the people's preferences would go down and demand would go down, in fact. So although, yes, that product's demand was inelastic and uh, people were really consuming it, but then, you know, a subsequent scientific research could have an impact on the entire demand curve shifting to the left and now people will be willing to pay less for it and you know people will be willing and able to buy less of it and pay less of it and in that sense total revenues will go down irrespective of the fact that you had subsequently i mean increased the price based on the decision that the pd for the product is inelastic but then that's what we are criticizing that there's other factors into play as well right which could offset the impact um that you had made based on you know um, the assumption that nothing else is going to change but in reality it can change and if it changes then it could have the impact of offsetting um, that could you know lead to a fall decrease in demand and then subsequently causing a fall in revenues and you know profits as well subsequently let's say so the point is what you will write is um, what you will suggest to the examiner is that these factors should actually be factored into decision making. They must be factored into decision making, which actually means that they must be considered while making a decision as well. So this is, I mean, tell the examiner this thing. They must be factored into decision making. This is something that you could write and this would definitely have a good impact on your answer. Now, another limitation of elasticity, um, which acts as a limitation to the usefulness of elasticity values in making uh, crucial business decisions, is that firms must be careful of the fact that the elasticity uh, varies along the demand curve. And we've already seen in the previous videos how elasticity, a downward sloping demand curve, um, a linear downward sloping demand curve, the elasticity varies along the demand curve. It's elastic at the start. And then as you go downwards, it becomes unitary elastic elasticity towards, you know, the midway of the demand curve is unitary elastic. And then, you know, as you move, as the prices go down further, the elasticity declines further and then it becomes less elastic or inelastic. So basically what we're trying to explain is that a business must be careful of the fact that, you know, they don't sort of generalize um, elasticity values of, to all the changes in prices, right? So the point is that, for example, a business um, they can't keep changing the price by the same amount and, you know, expect the same impact on quantity demand each time. So, for example, let's say that if the business increases the price by, let's say, 10% and, you know, quantity demanded, let's say, falls by 3%. Now, this does not, now we need to understand and businesses need to understand that this does not at all means that quantity demanded will fall by 3% again, right? Um, they have to make new calculations and estimates each time because, and the simple reason is because PD varies along the demand curve. So they can't base their decision making along this fact that just because if they increase the price uh, by 10% and quantity demanded fell by 3%, which means that, you know, the PED is, let's say, 0.3. So they can't expect the PED um, to, to, you know, they, they can't sort of expect the quantity demanded each time to fall by 3% by raising the price because it will vary along the demand curve. So the businesses must be how we, what sort of insight do we get from this is, the insight we get or the useful lesson that businesses must learn is that as students we should write in the answer while you know answering a discussed question, that businesses must be sure to calculate, you know, to calculate PD calculations for all changes in prices. That's what you're supposed to write. 
that they must calculate the PD calculation for all the changes in prices. And what the result for this would be that if they do that, they'll get a more accurate reflection um, of the likely demand response, given that elasticity varies along the demand curve. Yeah. So guys, these are the, you know, um, things that you could write the limitations. In fact, the criticisms that you could write of elasticity in making, um, you know, in providing useful insights for businesses. And if they are not factored into account, they're not considered. And with those business decisions are just solely made on the basis of elasticity coefficients, they could sort of make the entire business more worse off instead of making better off. So that's it, guys. I'll see you around in the next video. Till then, take care.